What is up, Packer fans, football fans? Here we are, week 10 of the 2022 NFL season, and it brings the 6-2 Dallas Cowboys to Lambeau Field to face off against Aaron Rodgers and the 3-6 Green Bay Packers, who are in the middle of a five-game losing streak after winning or being 3-1 in the beginning of the season. They lost their first game, won three in a row. Now they've lost five in a row. The Cowboys are favored by five at Lambeau in November, which I don't think I've ever seen with Aaron Rodgers in at quarterback. Very unusual territory for the Packers right now. But hopefully we get some cold weather. It's supposed to be a cold spell coming here this, later this week, starting tomorrow, I believe, and then into the weekend. Hopefully by kickoff at 325 on Sunday, it starts to get a little chillier and we all know the clocks came back an hour so it gets darker early and hopefully it is a little bit cold. Rogers is hoping for under 40 degrees. It doesn't seem like that's ever been really an advantage, especially in the playoffs last year. I feel like the Packers are better when it's cold, but right now we'll take any kind of maybe advantage we can get at this point. Just not ideal to be at home and the underdog, especially with this Packers team, especially with the back-to-back -back MVP, the four-time MVP, Aaron Rodgers in that quarterback. And it's kind of an exciting time. We all saw the video, but it is Don't Drop the Mike McCarthy's first time back at Lambeau Field since he was fired back in 20 in the middle of 2018 after they lost to the Arizona Cardinals at Lambeau without Kyler Murray this was before Kyler but yes the Packers fired Mike McCarthy he went down to Dallas after taking a year off of football and now he is the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys like I said so he is coming back and it is exciting for him you know his daughters were born here and all that or whatever and you know that's where he won a Super Bowl. So he's always going to be a you know fixture in the Packers organization. But this is a whole new season. It's 2022. And the Packers are, like I said, three and six. Cowboys six and two. So Cowboys have had a lot better season this year so far. And we all know that they've faced some injuries. They had Dak Prescott out for a couple weeks, and then you know, now Zeke was out, but now he should be back. Zeke will be wearing a knee brace on his knee, and hopefully that affects him a little bit. But they have a very, very good second running back. I won't even say backup. He's just their second running back in Tony Pollard. He had three touchdowns, over 130 yards on, on only 14 carries three weeks ago against the Chicago Bears. And then... Two weeks ago, they won 24-6 over the same Lions team that just beat the Packers. And now Cowboys are coming off a bye. Allowed Zeke to get his knee a little bit right. He, sh he is going to be good to go. And for the Packers, you know, facing a team coming off a bye, that's just a tough place to be, especially when you're struggling, trying to find any advantage you can. You were ho we They'd probably hope that they played on a Monday night. Instead, they had... Two weeks off, and they should be ready to go against this Packers team. Dak Prescott is healthy. You know, he missed four weeks, and the the Cowboys were able to still win those games. He does have his number one target, CeeDee Lamb. He's got Michael Gallup. He's got Noah Brown. He's got Dal Dalton Schultz. He's got the Packers tight end, the rookie, Jake Ferguson. And not to mention, he can throw it to Tony Pollard and Zeke out of the backfield. I don't think Zeke will be used as much in that fashion because of the knee, but maybe he won't be limited at all. Either way, Tony Pollard is a great pass catcher. He's super quick, super fast, and he's a guy that can really stretch the field and get after it. I'm worried about this Cowboys offense a little bit, but CeeDee Lamb, he leads the team with 556 yards, three touchdowns on the season, and he's a guy that can dominate a game at any point really um he's kind of struggled you know I mean he's got some good stats and everything but he's a guy that people were talking about being as a top 10 wide receiver this year and he really hasn't stepped into that role yet but Dak Prescott in three games this season he played the first game and then the last two now uh Cooper Rush played the the four in the middle but he only has three touchdowns 
in three games. So two interceptions. So Dak hasn't been playing great. They really have leaned on the running game for the most part. And like I said, Zeke will be having the knee brace. And Tony Pollard is the leading rusher on the team with 503 yards this season. The Cowboys' strength, however, is the offensive line, you know, with Zach Martin and Vadish in the middle. But the defense is what they really, really hang their hat on. Led by second-year player Micah Parsons, who has eight sacks this season. And then Dorrance Armstrong with five. Dante Fowler Jr. and Demarcus Lawrence both have four. They really get after the quarterback. And then on the back end, Trayvon Diggs, a guy who had 11 interceptions last year. He only has three this year through the first nine weeks, but the Cowboys have seven total on the season. So most of it is getting after it up front and then playing decent coverage on the back end. So the Packers, though, they look different on offense and defense. They've struggled on both sides of the ball this season. They've really struggled to play a complete game, you know, in any of the games, even the ones that they won. And so now coming off a loss to the Lions, a team with the worst record at the time in the league, now they jumped over the Texans, who are, I think, 1-6-1. and one. Um, So <laughs> Detroit has two wins and six losses instead. So, But Packers, three, three wins, six losses, that's not ideal. And after the loss or in the loss, they lost Rashawn Gary for the season. Eric Stokes for some time. We're still waiting to see if that's a season-ending injury. I'm hoping it is not. They lost Romeo Dobbs for a couple weeks. Four to six is what they say. I think it'll be more like three to four, but that puts them in at like the bye week or so. So it'll be after the bye. So that's like five weeks. And then we saw Romeo, I mean Aaron Jones and David Bakhtiari both kind of go in and out and come up and but they should be good to go. I'm really hoping they are out there. But what we're looking for this week is Randall Cobb is eligible for coming back off of IR. We'll see. He's not going to be able to practice, I don't think, until Saturday. That's when he's officially able to elevate back to the active roster. He's a guy, though, with Rodgers and with his veteran status that doesn't really need to practice. You'd like to see him out there, but he's a guy that I think can just come in and play. And then Christian Watson avoided a concussion. Everybody thought he was concussed, but he was not. It was just a protocol or just a just make sure he's okay issue. Um, and he should be healthy and ready to go. Alan Lazard, he's coming off a four-catch, 87-yard performance against the Lions. So the Packers will be looking to score more than the 17 points a game they've had over the first nine games of the season. And the, the Packers defense, though, they're going to have to keep the Cowboys' offense in check. Hopefully, they get all-pro middle linebacker Devondre Campbell back this week. But there's guys like Darnell Savage, Adrian Amos, Kenny Clark, Preston Smith. These guys are going to have to step up in the absence of Rashawn Gary and if Campbell cannot go. Hopefully, the veteran presence and the leadership, and they just need to play better. Each one of those guys needs to be better than he has been this season. It's just been really like a down year for both our safeties, and to have them both go downhill at the same time hasn't been ideal. And then in the middle, the, the defensive line just hasn't really got the push up front with, with Kenny Clark but like, like we're used to, and it's just been a just rocky season on both sides of the ball for everybody. The Packers last week played decent defense. They intercepted Goff once. You know, they didn't really get a sack. They couldn't get after it. The one sack got negated because of the helmet hit, but Packers held the Lions, a team that scored 35 points per game at home this season, to 15 points. When your defense holds another team to 15 points and doesn't give up points anywhere else, like on, on offense or special teams, when the team only scores 15 points in the game, that's a game you have to win. You can't just score single-digit nine points and lose the game. But I'm not so worried about this Packers defense against the Cowboys offense. What I'm most worried about is this Cowboys defense against this Packers offense. That is where... It could be a long day for Aaron Rodgers and the rest of these guys. We've seen major you know, comebacks and battles between these two teams over the last couple of years, last 10 or so, and you know all the different games, the, the Jerry Cook game and the Des Cotty game and then the Matt Flynn game. Um, so 
we know that these guys or these teams will really come and get after it. And obviously we know the, the ice bowl and everything. So the historic nature of this matchup is huge and super exciting. But it's going to come down to can the Packers block Micah Parsons? Micah Parsons is a guy that can wreck the game. He can get after the quarterback, get his sacks, put you in bad spots, long second downs, long third downs. And then his pressure can lead to forced throws, hurried throws. And then on the back end, you know, Trayvon Diggs is a ball hawk and will get after it for sure. So can the Packers block it up front? I don't care if they have to, you know, keep Mercedes Lewis and another tight end and just have seven linemen basically on the line or bring another offensive lineman in and try to block it up front. But you're not, they're not going to be able to do anything if they can't block Micah Parsons and they move him around. He's not going to be just on the left side or on just on the right side going up against Bakhtiari. He's going to be in the middle, in the linebacker, in the like D-tackle D position. They move him everywhere, all over the field. He's even played corner some snaps. So this guy is a guy that they need to watch for. Luckily, he's number 11, so he should be easy to point out at least on the field. But Packers offense has to figure out a way to execute at a high level and really get after it. They have to figure out what they're going to do, how they're going to game plan this, and they just need to shut down Micah Parsons, and then the game will open up for them. They do have the home field advantage, the crowd, the weather, so hopefully that comes into play, but the injuries, the lack of success this season, communication issues, execution issues, all those things, if they show their face this weekend, Dallas will take advantage of it, and it will be a long, long afternoon for this Packers team. However, the Cowboys have had some little issues. They struggle against the run somewhat, giving up roughly 121 yards a game. That's 19th in the league, but they're number two overall on defense as they're tops in every other statistical category, pretty much. Third in points allowed, seventh in yards allowed, sixth in passing yards, eighth in third down conversions, fifth in red down conversions, and fourth in sacks per attempt. That means they're getting after it, they're coming for you, and the Packers offensive line needs to probably play their best game of the season. And for me, they haven't played horrible. They didn't really open up running lanes last week, but Rodgers only got sacked once, and a lot of those throws were, you know, they hurried them, and against the commanders, they were hurrying them. But some of those short passes, but... They're going to have to really, really establish this running game. That's going to be crucial to this, and that's why Aaron Jones' health is so dire for this game. Aaron Jones a couple years ago had four touchdowns against the Cowboys in Dallas, and we need a game like that from him today. Otherwise, we need a historic, historic Aaron Rodgers performance. But can the Packers block it up front? Can they stop Micah Parsons from wrecking this game? He is coming, and he is relentless, and it's going to be a matter of stopping him and then you know executing as well. So in order to win this game, the Packers are going to have to play the best game of the seasons on both sides of the ball. No one's going to give them a chance to win this game, but if they do play Green Bay football, win the turnover battle, find a way to run the ball, have Aaron Rodgers connect with his receivers. We can't have Sammy Watkins running a slant route when Rodgers is throwing a corner route or a fade route. Just things like that. We need to be on the same page, and hopefully this is the game where we finally put things together. Matt LaFleur has to call the game of his life. Literally, he has to. And no more passes to David Bakhtiari. Stick to throwing the ball to guys who are under 300 pounds, especially in critical fourth and one situations if you're going to go for it. And hopefully he's learning his lesson. He coaches so emotional. He has to just take the points, especially when it's a tie game. Just take the points. It was 0-0. Just take the points. So hopefully Cobb's back. If Cobb plays, Watson stays healthy for the whole game. Lazard continues just to be Lazard. And Sammy Watkins can catch more than one pass and kind of continue to get on that same page with Rodgers. And then you throw Samari Toure in the mix, and he comes in and makes one of his big plays like he has been like each of the last two weeks Packers could figure out a way to pull this one out they're only underdogs by five points you know less than a touchdown so that's that is a big thing that you know people are still questioning whether they should bet against Aaron Rodgers which for a lot of people they don't want to do it's hard to do and he could come out and literally play 
an amazing game and the Packers win. So it really comes down to execution, play calling, and just, you know, being the Packers team that everybody expected them to be coming into this season. Um, Packers, you know, they don't look like a real threat to the Cowboys, just considering the record. But the Cowboys have had their struggles. You know, Dak hasn't played great. He's still kind of coming back from those injuries and everything. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be exciting. Obviously, the home field advantage helps a little bit. But for the last two weeks, three weeks, you know, I think it's mostly been just the, the last two weeks I've been saying it's a must-win game for the Packers, especially to try to keep pace with the Vikings in the division. That's pretty much a lost cause. But now there's a lot of teams in the mix around three and six or four and five or five and four or whatever their, their record is if they had the bye. So a lot of these teams are right there. So the Packers just need to start stacking wins, go one and all each week and figure out a way to get back in the playoff hunt. If they lose this game, they basically have to win out. People are saying they have to win out. The playoff starts now. They do have one game maybe to kind of flex and, and lose if if it gets like that but otherwise basically have to win out from here and I hate to say well you have one game to lose because you really don't you just have to win period no <laughs> no ifs ands or buts the Packers have lost five in the row for the first time since Aaron Rodgers took over at quarterback in 2008 that is crazy and the Packers haven't played four good quarters of football in one game like they've played a good half here a good half here a great quarter here a good quarter there but never a full four quarters in the same game. <laughs> so we'll see. Packers have to get it going. They really have to. In order to beat Dallas, they're going to have to do everything right. You know, very little room for error on Sunday against this Dallas Cowboys team. And hopefully we can, we can shut out Mike McCarthy's homecoming party and the Packers can get the W move to four and six, and then start thinking about getting back to 500. Never going to get to 500 if you keep losing games. So Packers, got to win this one. Go Pack, go. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Check out other videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Go Pack, go. Go Pack, go.